momento, o senhor André Tcherdubilski, CEO da Zeg Ambiental, para a sua apresentação. Hi, I'm André Tcherdubilski, I'm the founder and CEO of uh, Zeg Environmental. Uh, Zeg stands for Zero Emissions Generation, and since since our uh, foundation, uh, our purpose was always to implement technology and innovation in order to solve a very important uh, issue in Brazil, mostly. Uh, we, we, we do have a kind of a, a sanitation crisis and uh, we implemented a, a national law for waste management in 2010. And into we are now in 2021, and very few achievements were were accomplished. Uh, so uh, Zeg was created uh, in 2012, and uh, I will try to show you how we 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 believe we can implement and solve the problem not only in Brazil now but uh, we are being requested to solve the waste uh, problems uh, around the globe, actually. So I'm very happy to be here and I uh, enjoy your, your event. So this is the figures of, uh, of Brazil waste management, okay? The waste itself uh, increased uh, by 25% its generation in the last 20 years. Uh, we are generating every year 80 million tons of waste per year. In Brazil, we have over 3,000 dump sites. Uh, so, as you can see, if we have 5,700 municipalities, uh, we are speaking that more than 50% of all the municipalities uh, are uh, dumping all the waste on, on the land, on the rivers, are burning waste. So it's a very critical situation. Uh, that's why uh, we, we are in an urge to, to implement new technologies and to take advantage of this forum of uh, energy recovery. Uh, so uh, from these 5,700 municipalities, 96% of all those municipalities have less than 100,000 inhabitants. That means that we cannot just bring technologies uh, to Brazil from developed countries because we will never get technical uh, scalability, neither economical feasibility. So today, as we were 10 years ago, we are one century late in terms of waste management in Brazil. Uh, just to mention that 10% of the waste in Brazil is not even collected, and uh, we, we, we have 50% of dump sites. So this is more or less the figures that we have today, and uh, it, it's, it's actually the same as we had 10 years ago. What if we uh, extrapolate this to, to, the, to the world? So I, I took, I found this chart uh, in the internet, which shows um, the, the waste generation by, uh, per day, uh, per ton by day, uh, in each region of urbanized uh, regions. Okay, so we are speaking that only the urbanized uh, regions in the world, uh, we are generating roughly around uh, a bit more than 1.5 million tons of waste per day. What is the percentage of those cities that have uh, less than uh, 100,000 inhabitants or 3,000 inhabitants? Uh, so we will have a lot of opportunities to implement uh, what, what we believe uh, should be implementing in order to, to 
to make circular economy, sustainable projects, and so on and so forth. So what Zag believes uh, that we, we, what we believe should be the engine of, of this circular economy and sustainable projects. We developed, uh, since eight years ago, uh, a, a reactor. It's a pyrogasification reactor. We call it flash box. And as you will see, this flash box is very flexible. It's plug and play. Uh, in 10 days after you drop the, the container, it's a, a standard 40 feet container. Once you drop it uh, on the floor, 10 days after you plug everything and you are able to start converting uh, waste into a fuel, renewable fuel gas, synthetic gas. So this technology was uh, implemented and created with a French scientist and myself. This French scientist was the head of engineering uh, of the, the French aerospace uh, agency. And I am coming from automotive sector. I spent uh, 20 years in the automotive sector always in project uh, management, innovation, engineering. And my last six years were based in, in Luxembourg, where uh, Delphi, the company that I was working for, um, has a, a technical center and uh, where we were creating innovation for the thermal division there. So what is a flash box? Flash box is not incineration. We do not burn the residue. We do not let the residues get in touch with the flames. We, we create a red reductive atmosphere uh, sealed. So we do not have uh, air or excess of oxygen. And we, we, we take these uh, this sealed chamber, uh, heated uh, in a very high temperature, and every piece of waste that touches this uh, very hot surface, uh, we, we have a kind of a spontaneous uh, devolatilization of, of the matter. So we instantly uh, transform the solid waste into a gas uh, fuel. So we keep the reactor above a thousand Celsius degrees. This temperature allows us to reach above the, the carbon boundary limit uh, temperature. The carbon uh, usually, not usually, but by chemistry, uh, it volatilizes uh, above 850 Celsius degrees. So we always keep the temperature uh, above a thousand Celsius degrees, which is pretty much similar to a magma uh, temperature from, from uh, Vulcans. And uh, we, we make sure that with this temperature, we are able to generate uh, instantly uh, a, a very uh, hot gas. And this hot gas is directly injected into a, a energy generation matrix. Which kind of process, uh, which kind of waste we can process? Every kind that has uh, volatile carbon. Uh, so every biomass, polymers, uh, plastics, rubbers, uh, including uh, hospitalar waste, dangerous waste, everything that can be uh, volatilized. So as I, as I mentioned already, uh, we, we have a kind of evolution of the paralysis system. We will always have green bonds and uh, green bonds and carbon neutral projects. We will always be able to collect carbon credits. We are a plug and play solution. It's, uh, it can be mobile. You can put on, on a truck and you can uh, uh, transfer 
this this container uh, around certain uh, landfills or dump sites or whatever. Uh, we do not generate any kind of dioxins, furanes, uh, toxic gases, because we do not have oxygen inside our container. We block the entrance of the air. And uh, a, good, a good thing for those projects is that a very low civil work uh, is required in each project. So the capex is re relatively uh, low. So our business model, if we want to implement circular economy, if we want to, to, to support the UN um, uh, social development goals, uh, sustainable development goals that UN is promoting in every country on the globe, uh, we believe that we should implement uh, our business model, which is the Eco Park 4D. What is the 4D standing for? Is the, for, the first D is the decarbonization. So every project, we make sure that we will get uh, carbon credits or green bonds. And uh, for sure, we are supporting the climate change. If you know, uh, more than 10% of all the greenhouse gases generated around the globe are coming from waste management sector. Decentralization, the second D. Uh, we believe that once we are able to decentralize the plants, I mean by that, if we can implement smaller modules, smaller uh, plants treating waste, we are able much better to develop the uh, regionally. So the small cities, the, the medium cities, the cities below 300,000 inhabitants, for example, uh, we are able to generate uh, jobs, we are able to uh, generate tax revenue to the municipality, to the communities. So it's a very important matter for us. Digi digitalization. We are already uh, in the, the fourth uh, industrial revolution. So we apply automa automa uh, automation in every single plant that we implement in order to increase the operational availability. So as much as aut automated, we will have our plants. We are able not only to improve the efficiency of the, of the operations of our plants, but we are also able to monitor uh, from a headquarter all the plants we will be implementing around the globe. And um, we are also able to, to take advantage of all the plants connected uh, in order to teach each one of, of the plant with the best practices uh, we will be founding during this uh, monitoring system. And the last D is the, what we call the democratization of resources. We believe that once the three first Ds are accomplished, we allow the, the municipalities to invest uh, the, the money they avoided uh, spending on, uh, on the waste management field uh, to, to invest in the basic and fundamental needs of the, of this, of the society, which, which in our opinion are uh, safety, uh, health, uh, education, sanitation, uh, so on and so forth. So our process flow is very simple. We receive at our eco park the waste, we sort, we recycle, we sell the recycles, we convert the, the waste into RDF. The RDF goes to our waste to energy plant and we generate renewable energy. The renewable energy uh, means uh, not only power, but thermal energy as well. We can generate a hot, uh, water, hot air, uh, cold water, cold air. We can we can make it. Uh, uh, we can make a solution as per our customer requirement.
So this is an example of uh, 80,000 inhabitants. This is a project that we just kicked off. Uh, they are already starting with the, the civil works to, to get the plant. But uh, this project itself uh, will uh, generate in carbon credits the equivalent of planting almost 5 million trees. So this is a very important uh, number because in this way, as the carbon credit market is increasing, we will always have some alternatives, uh, alternative uh, revenue. And this is for sure is going to support the economical results and the, the, the internal uh, results and returns to the investor. We will avoid of land filling more than 90% of the waste. We will always generate a bit of uh, uh, ashes, uh, inert ashes, not uh, lexiviate. Uh, but uh, we will always generate a kind of um, ashes and inert material. And this inert material and ashes are, uh, can be sent to, to cementary market or can be landfill. And uh, in this plant as well, we will be recycling more than 80,000 tons, uh, 80,000 tons uh, per month of, per year, sorry, uh, of recyclable material. Where are Zeg now? Where, where, where are we? Where is Zeg now? Uh, today we have eight projects under development in Brazil. One is already commissioned. One will uh, be commissioned from September 2001. The first two projects are located in Minas Gerais, Brazil. Uh, we have just kicked off another eco park in Sao Paulo State. Uh, the 80,000 inhabitants uh, eco park that I just mentioned. And we have other five uh, under financial restructuring. This financial restructuring will be requiring for, from us around uh, 60, $60 million, uh, roughly. We are as well developing a sustainable city in Tuscany with a waste management company. We were invited to, to develop the engineering uh, part and the implementation part, the, the OEM part of the waste, all the waste management and sanitation of this, of this uh, smart city, of this sustainable city. Uh, we were recently invited by USAID as well, and USAID invited us because in Somalia right now they have a very strong crisis. Uh, it's very dry and hot. In, uh, we, we will be starting in Bural, the first eco park. And as, as it is very hot and, and dry, uh, the the dump sites are getting self-burned. So it is creating a massive smoke, very toxic and dense smoke. Uh, so, so the situation there is, is very bad. Here, here is the pictures that I took myself. I went to Somalia uh, to follow this, this humanitarian project. And we, we do not have a specific land to, to dump the waste. Uh, the, the waste is dumped all over the places. And because it's very hot and dry, uh, they, are, they, are, they are burning uh, the, the dump sites. And uh, it's creating a very critical situation. People are getting, are getting sick. There are a lot of people living around uh, those dump sites. So it's a very bad humanitarian uh, situation over there. And uh, Zag took the, the motivation and the, the courage, actually, 
to go to Somalia and to to start helping these humanitarian entities and funds uh, in order to implement uh, waste to energy uh, projects. Not only waste to energy, we will also implement uh, our eco park. We will recover material. We will implement uh, a process in order in order to convert plastics into ecological resins. Or, I mean, uh, from from recyclables back to to raw material uh, recycling. So this is this is what we are we are more or less doing. Uh, you can reach me uh, at SAG at any time. And uh, I'm very happy to present uh, this, this important solution that we believe uh, can not only solve the Brazilian sanitation crisis, but other regions as well, in a very small scale, in a very small uh, footprint with low capex. Uh, you can modulate uh, as per the requirements, as per the needs, we can start with one module, we can add up uh, several modules afterwards, or we can just decentralize uh, what we need. Anyhow, uh, everything is going to be monitored and controlled from our, from our technical center. Thank you, and I, I wait for questions.